the Clyde is the name of Glasgow's main river. Now, the Clyde became the heart of the Glasgow economy in the 19th century, and it flourished very much as a very important industrial center. With the introduction of the steam engine, the area around the Clyde became a, an important area for shipbuilding. So, shipbuilding along the Clyde started in the 18th century, but it was only in the 19th century that the Clyde shipyards specialized in steam ships made of iron and later steel, which rapidly replaced the wooden vessels that had been used until that point. So Clyde built became an industry benchmark of Quantity. And some of the biggest ships in the world were built on the Clyde at that time, including the Lusitania and also the Comet. The Comet was the first commercial steamboat on the Clyde. It sailed in 1812 and it was the first commercial steamship to go to Europe. And we don't have a photograph of it, but we can see the comet represented in John Knox's painting at the Kelvin Grove Gallery. The comet was sailing across the Clyde, and we can actually see how different Glasgow looked at that point, surrounded by hills and green grass. Along the Clyde, we find a series of landmarks, which are very much a symbol of modernity and a symbol of the evolving and growing Glasgow. For example, the Glasgow Bridge, also known as the Clyde Arch. This arch was only completed in 2006, and it's a road bridge that connects the two banks of the Clyde. A prominent feature of the bridge is the innovative curved design. So as you can see, um, the, 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 the arch uh, crosses the river at an angle. Uh, the bridge the bridge takes uh, four lanes uh, of traffic two are for public transports uh, and then two for private and commercial uh, traffic and that is also um, a pedestrian and a cycle path it's absolutely stunning in daylight but also in the evening when it's all um, lit up and it's uh, also known as uh, the squinty bridge Along the Clyde, we find other impressive buildings, such as the Scottish Exhibition and Conference Centre. This was actually built in 1985 with the Armadillo, the smaller building on the left side of the picture, being completed by Dan. And in more recent times, in 2013, that's when the Hydro was completed and opened. The Hydro is that circular building on the right side, and this is a, a huge arena. It's an arena used for sports, but also for concerts, and some of the most um, and some of the international singers performed in the Hydro. Madonna, Britney Spears, uh, and Rod Stewart that actually inaugurated the arena in 2013 with an opening concert. Now, speaking of music, Glasgow became the city of music in 2008, and some very well-known singers and bands, such as the Franz Ferdinand, the Simple Minds, the uh, Travis, and also... Um, the Oasis, uh, who are actually not from Glasgow, but they were discovered in Glasgow, and the ACDC, these uh, were uh, originally from uh, Glasgow. So Glasgow has uh, produced uh, a long line of uh, iconic um, acts. In 
If we move on along the Clyde, we will find the Glasgow Science Centre, which was open in 2001, and it's today one of Scotland's most popular paid-for visitor attractions. Uh, there's an IMAX cinema. There's also a science uh, mall that houses over 250 science uh, learning uh, exhibits. And perhaps uh, the, more, the most uh, stunning uh, part uh, of the science center is uh, the wing tower that you see. There's a yellow arrow that points uh, at it. Now, the wing tower is uh, just over... 400 feet high and it won the Guinness record for being the tallest fully rotating freestanding structure in the world. You can go up to the very top and you get a beautiful view of the city from up there. On the opposite side of the wing tower, on the opposite side of the river, stands the Finningston Crane. This is no longer um, operational, but it's a symbol of the city's engineering heritage. In the past, the crane was used for loading cargo onto the ships, and in particular, steam locomotives that were then exported around, around the world. So highlight number nine is the Riverside Museum, which is a, a museum that once again we find along the River Clyde. This is the Museum of Transports, and it was built in 2016 by the British Iraqi architect Zaha Adij. And just like other buildings built by this architect, the Riverside Museum is all about movement. If we look at the facade or the back facade of uh, um, the museum, we see all these uh, zigzag um, line and these uh, pointed uh, arches. And the outside is very different uh, and is very um, imposing. Uh, and the inside uh, is uh, just as beautiful. Inside, uh, we don't have uh, pointed arches, uh, um, but we find uh, galleries uh, and, and, and Galleries that uh, fold one into the others almost as uh, waves. So it's uh, very nice uh, to be walking uh, around uh, the museum. The type of exhibits that we find here are uh, older uh, methods of uh, transport. So there's an example of the oldest uh, bicycle in the world. There are older um, trains. Uh, and there's also, and you can see that on the uh, right side of the slide, there's also the reconstructions uh, of one of the streets of uh, Glasgow and what um, a street in Glasgow would have looked like uh, in the past uh, and what type uh, of uh, transports, uh, uh, such as uh, carriages, for example, uh, would have, uh, uh, we would have found uh, back at the time. One of the highlights of uh, the museum is uh, the reconstructions, uh, or better, the, the, the part of the museum that focuses uh, on the history of Glasgow subway. The subway is uh, very much uh, uh, functioning nowadays, so if you are in Glasgow and you want to get from one point to the other, instead of using uh, the buses or instead of walking, given how big Glasgow is, you can jump uh, on uh, the subway. And the subway was built in the 19th century, and it, it is the third oldest uh, subway.